Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about the Still HS82 hedge trimmer and its common problems. I got nothing. Thanks for watching. No, just kidding. Today we're going to talk about common problems that we find with the HS82 hedge trimmer. If you're looking to purchase a new one, this will give you some ideas of what to expect, or if you're looking to purchase a used one, things to look for. Just a second, I'll go ahead and I'll bring you in here and we'll get a closer look. All right, the HS82 hedge trimmer. As a whole, I really like this hedge trimmer. It's an outstanding hedge trimmer. It's extremely durable, it's extremely reliable, and they really hold up to a lot of abuse. We don't see a whole lot of major issues with these things. So here we have two HS82Ts, T models. Uh, this one here is the newer style. The one on the right is the newer style. This one's the little bit older style. They changed a few things, uh, mainly the carburetor now. The new choke design is different on the new design. And the handle, as you can see, is just a little bit more rounded than the older one. The older one has the uh, manual choke here that you see. Otherwise, engine-wise, everything else, for the most part, they're the same. Frame design, handle design, they pretty much remain the same. Blade design as well. Not a whole lot of differences. The newer design also, they did change, which is a good fix, is the older one here had the aluminum exhaust tip, comes off the muffler just to shoot it straight out the front. And now the new one is a new rubber design, soft rubber design and this thing fits over the exhaust tip over the, or the nipple there. It's a much better design, it doesn't fall apart. This one here, as you can see, the uh, welds would tend to break over time just due to vibration and use and come apart. So while I've got it upside down here, a couple common issues that we run into with these. Occasionally you'll get some of these dampening springs, these anti-vibration springs. They'll break on occasion. There's four of them. Uh, the new design and the old design, they're exactly the same. So that's one thing to look for. So if the engine, or if it doesn't feel right in your hand and the engine's flopping around a little bit, that's one thing to look for is to see if these any of these springs are broken off. A lot of times if the exhaust screen clogs and it doesn't make any power and it's not running correctly, it seems that some of the guys, their first response is to start loosening all of the blade bolts because they think it's an issue with the blades getting gummed up with you know sap from the plants or whatever so you want to make sure that those things are always tight another thing to look out for would be loose bars these things will loosen up the blade bars inside the gearbox on occasion there's two screws there's one towards the front and there's one towards the back so if you take this cover off you'll see those two screws in there and basically you just want to make sure that it's tight if these bars do get loose in the gear case they will start to wear out the gear case on the sides prematurely and they will wear out the bar as well of course and the cover so it's very important to make sure that this bar is tight at all times if it does loosen up just go ahead and take this cover off tighten the two screws that are in here and then you shouldn't have any other problems with it just keep an eye on it I've seen them come in before where they just kept running it and running it and running it and this gear case just completely wore through on the sides and on the cover. And this gear case on the stills is very expensive. So if you can't source a used one, if you have to buy a new one, it's very expensive. It's very labor intensive. It's a big cost to fix that, so be aware of that as well. So if the bar bolts do loosen up, you want to take this cover off the gear case. There's a screw here and a screw here. You can tighten those up and make sure that bar is tight. Now with another thing, this is just a maintenance issue with these is if guys are not greasing these things on a normal basis. You wanna make sure that you're greasing these. We try to tell people to do it, you know, once every couple of weeks just to check it. Still has their own grease that they use. It's really outstanding grease, comes in a tube and you just go right through the cover, right through a hole in the cover, you take a plug out and just give it a little squirt every once in a while. As you can see on this one, this one's pretty dry. They just haven't been on top of, uh, 
their maintenance with this unit. So if you do see this and this happens in the gear case, occasionally we'll see a broken connecting rod. There's two of these, one on the top and then one down below underneath that run the blades. They tend to snap off right here at the end. A lot of it's, again, abuse. If they hit something, they hit a piece of rebar, they hit a really heavy stick, whatever it may be, and it shocks it, it will break these off. So if the blades aren't functioning properly, they don't seem like they're turning right, or if the gear case is making noise, you might wanna you know, pop this cover off and just check out the gear case. Make sure everything's okay. Make sure it's greased properly. Other than that, the gear cases are extremely reliable and they hold up well as long as you're greasing them on a normal basis. All right, flipping them back over. Gas tanks on these are really good. They hold up well. The plastic is really durable. I don't see a lot of problems with these as far as getting holes or cracking or breaking. Vents I will have to replace on occasion. They will start leaking. So that is something to look out for. You just wanna make sure that it's not wet or wet all around this tank vent. So at times you may have to replace them. The gas caps are good, they're reliable. Occasionally you'll get one where this white piece will break off, but otherwise they hold up just fine. No real issues with those at all. The fuel lines are really good on these things as well. Every once in a while the return fuel line will crack and break, so you may have to replace that as well. Fuel filters are good, normal maintenance type stuff. Recoils are really good on these. They hold up very well. Occasionally, the recoil pulley inside, you may have to replace if it starts getting loose. Um, you will see some excessive wear over time. Other than that, the housings are great. They hold up really well. The ignition coils on these units as well are good. Occasional failure, not too often though. They hold up quite well. The front handles are really good. They hold up quite well. They're very strong. I don't see many broken ones at all. I can't remember the last time I've had to replace one. And the top side of the blades, kind of the same stuff here. You can see on this one, these are all loose. Somebody loosened them all up. So I'll address that when I service it. I highly recommend, got two of them here. One without the blade tip. One without, one with. I highly recommend people run these tip guards. I'm here in Arizona and we have a lot of rock, a lot of hard ground, and this really does help to keep the tip of the hedge trimmer out of the dirt. Um, all of our bushes and stuff are usually really close to the ground here, so they're constantly getting beat up with rocks, sticking them in the gravel, stuff like that, so it does help. You will start seeing excessive wear on the tips without the tip guard. So that's one thing I do recommend. You know, it's not 100% necessary. It's just a, you know, it's a recommendation that I try to tell, tell our customers. Air filter covers are really good. They're robust, they're strong. They can take a beating. No issues with these things whatsoever. The rear handles are good. Triggers are good. Never have to replace them. Kill switches. They just, every once in a while, you might have to clean one, or if it gets broken from abuse, you might have to replace it. Otherwise, the handle itself is really good. The throttle cables are good as well. Um, you will occasionally see the cable coming apart on the carburetor and starting to fray. So that is something that may need to be addressed if you're seeing that. I've also seen them get used for a very long time with a, a fraying cable as well. They will they still hold up for a long time. So one thing to keep an eye out for. Let me pull the air filter cover off this thing and I'll discuss another issue. All right, I got the air filter covers off these two units. Now there's a new style carburetor on these hedge trimmers. That is an auto choke, if you will. Basically you push down this ring, turn it on to choke, you start it, and then when you hit the throttle, it turns the choke off. And then the older style was just a full manual style. Turn it on to choke, you start it, take the choke off manually. Old design, good reliable design. You would occasionally get this choke shaft that would wear out. This one's a little bit loose, which is really common and some occasional leaking problems with this older design carburetor, but not 
too many. Very reliable carburetor. Now the new design with this choke, we've had a lot of problems with these carburetors leaking. So if you're looking for one of these units used and you see a lot of excessive fuel or wetness underneath the carburetor, all this just has a nice light coating of gas on it. Or the air filter cover. This is the bottom of it on the outside and on the inside. All that wetness there, that's a good indicator that this carburetor is leaking. There were some issues internally with the carburetor on the fuel pump side of the carburetor where the carburetor casting, the edges were extremely sharp and they would cut little, uh, they would cut holes in the fuel pump, if you will. And then it would cause issues and leaking issues with the carburetor. So this is a known problem to still, and they will warranty the carburetor out if you do experience this problem, if you have a new one. So that is something to be aware of also. Air filters on these units are really good. They fit in the side of the housing really well. Not a lot of issues with these things. If you start seeing this foam separate, this pre-filter separate from the main air filter, you wanna replace that as well. It's important to have that pre-filter. It does help quite a bit. Otherwise, not really any issues at all with those things. Uh, what I was referring to earlier with the throttle cable fraying, if you look at this cable right here, you'll start seeing the cable coming apart. That's something to be aware of. I've seen them before where they're just hanging on by one little tiny cable. So keep an eye on that. Make sure it's not coming apart. You shouldn't. Otherwise, not a lot of issues with these throttle cables whatsoever. Engine-wise on these are fantastic. I really don't see a lot of problems. If I do, it's going to be because it has extremely high hours or it's several years old. I don't see a lot of failures. I can't, of all the years I've worked on these things, I can only remember maybe a handful of issues that were warranty issues or engine failures. Really don't see a lot of failures on these. They just get wore out completely. The piston rings completely and the pistons will just completely wear out over time. But other than that, not a lot of issues with them. The clutches will start to loosen up and chatter and start making some noise when it's idling. You'll hear them banging around in there. But again, that's just something because of age and use and high hours. Nothing because of still or a design flaw or anything like that. It's just use. So as a whole, these hedge trimmers are fantastic. They're extremely durable, extremely reliable. They hold up to abuse quite well. So if you're looking to purchase one of these, that's kind of what to expect. Again, I don't see a lot of major failures on them. Just normal day-to-day -day use, use and abuse type problems. So stay on top of the maintenance and these things will run for a very long time. I have customers that have these things and they are well over five years old. You know, we just replace the blades on them on occasion and they just keep running them. If they take care of them, they will run a long time. So. So that's pretty much it for the still HS82 hedge trimmers. And if you have any questions about these units, you can uh, leave a comment below and I'll try to do my best to answer them. Or if you see anything else that uh, I might not be experiencing or maybe I'm missing something that uh, somebody else sees. So, But anyway, I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.